Yeah, I'm gonna defend this one. Signing my own death warrant, but this is the hill I'm willing to die on. Panini is still trash, and the Canker Sisters do belong in prison, but I won't lie, Ed and Eddie did a way better job at handling the Eds getting harassed than Shouter ever did. Which is a very, very low bar when you remember that he married his stalker in a dream, and Panini's only personality trait was thirst. But the Canker Sisters, despite being just as one-dimensional, work here, because the show actually remembers one important fact, and no, this isn't the nostalgia talking. I'm Sarcastic Course, and do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button, followed by the bell, to be kept up to date on my worst takes pretending to be content. Now, let's talk about the show before I get cancelled. Ed, Ed, and Eddie is one of those cartoons I grew up with, and I'll probably never turn my back on it. I was a Cartoon Network kid, and this show was the undisputed king of reruns. Yeah, Dexter was good, and the Powerpuff Girls kicked ass, but if you wanted a laugh, this was where you would go. With the story centering around one long summer in a sleepy cul-de-sac by the creek, the kids that lived there, and the three goons who'd put Influencer in their bio, trying to scam everyone else for their money, all so that they could buy Jawbreakers. This served as a kind of proto Phineas and Ferb, where the answer to what are we gonna do today is always get that bread. But between their bad reputation, incompetence, and karma hitting harder than Tyson, they never stood a chance. Three outcasts brought together by accidentally sharing the same name, and just general geographical proximity, Ed, Ed, and Eddie always had each other's backs, making them an endearing trio to follow because while they might not always have the best intentions, they are malicious. Well, with how screwed up some of their scams are, yeah, you definitely can say at least some of the time they had this coming. The other kids were pricks too, so you were fine with them getting scammed. But win or lose, you are gonna have a good time. Why is your helmet tied to your butt? For protection. In the lineup, we got Ed with 1D and fewer brain cells. The kid is obsessed with TV, comic books, but has the strength of Hercules. This simple jack provides the muscle to pull off whatever harebrained scheme the other two come up with. Like, he's a nice guy who just wants to help his friends and eat jawbreakers, he's not malicious or anything, plus his sister's a bitch so you're pretty much always on his side. Dumb Muscle is hard to get right, but he's perfect just the way he is. Unlike Ed who's ashamed of something underneath that hat. <laughs> now Ed, aka Double D, is a special case, as I do have a confession to make. I always thought Double D was a girl. Like, I shit you not, I thought Double D was a girl till I was like 12. And the secret behind the hat was he just had long hair. And if they rebooted this show and made him trans, I think most people's reactions would just be, I can fucking see it. <laughs> No, it makes sense. Double D is the brains of the operation. He's a neat freak whose parents talk to him almost exclusively in sticky notes. If it wasn't for Ed and Eddie, odds are Double D wouldn't have any friends. So he sticks by them through thick and thin, as he really does appreciate having them in his life. Won't talk to them after high school, but for the moment, he's all in. Being the sole voice of reason and moderation, to both of his friends' madness. He is the responsible one no one listens to. But he tries. <laughs> Finally, we have Eddie. Eddie is the microscopic leader of the group. He thinks he's a short king, but he's really just insecure and overcompensating. Being the resident narcissist of the team, he's the one who drags everyone around from one dumb scam to another. Eddie is greedy. He likes quarters, and he's the guy most likely to get the crap kicked out of him. As most of the time, he kinda deserves it. Ed has a heart of gold, Double D is just along for the ride, but Eddie is the devil on their shoulder pushing them to take things just a step too far. He's got his good qualities, he's loyal to his friends, and he will always be the one to stand up for them. At the end of the day though, they're all kids who haven't figured out how to act. They do a lot of stupid stuff, but they aren't bad people. Which is something I can't say about the Kankers. Cankers. <laughs> yabba dabba crackers! Now, just to be clear, I don't think the cankers aren't harassing the Eds, or that this behavior is okay. Women harassing men should be taken just as seriously as men harassing women. But I think that this show does a lot more to make it work as a joke than something like Chowder, where it's just a bit, or Family Guy, where they just want to see how dark they can go and then ignore it the rest of the time. Ed, Ed, and Eddie was smart enough to recognize what they were doing was bad, and that allows it to make the humor actually land. 
The Kanger sisters, consisting of Lee, Marie, and May, are the trailer trash you live in fear of. What they want, they take, and what they don't like, you better hope you run fast enough. These three are meant to be the evil versions of the Eds, with Lee being the bossy leader who can't see a damn thing, May is dumb like Ed, and Marie, yeah, we don't really know. She's just kind of punk rock and nothing else. I guess she just likes nerds. The show never tries too hard to give them a lot of characterization, as you pretty much understand what they are from their first episode. A threat. Like, this first episode goes really hard in just making you understand exactly what role they're gonna play in the story. Cementing them as menaces to society and the boys' health. See, on a normal day of bug collecting, a thing only serial killers and anime kids do, the boys hear something creepy. Fearing for the booty, they run till they knock themselves unconscious in a puddle of filth before waking up in a stranger's house and missing their clothes. Not a great start, but it's okay. It's only gonna get worse. See, this house is a trailer and the Canker Sisters are here, with them throwing out a lot of warning signs, but they're offering a free lunch and TV, so the boys decide to stick around. Ignoring the obvious warning signs, the boys eat their meat, with them just suddenly becoming a little bit dickish. Like, Eddie is being a bad house guest demanding another drink, Ed is being his the usual slob self, while WD just maybe could have phrased and don't touch me while I eat just a little bit nicer. The cankers decide that is the final straw, in what sounds like a word-for-word -word reenactment of what their mom used to yell at their dads. I'm good enough that we've worked hard and broken our back! So the boys get put to work. Using that half hour of hard labor to blackmail the boys into becoming house husbands, cleaning up their own mess, doing dishes, which fair, but when they have them start cleaning toilets and washing the outside of the house, while they sit on the couch and do nothing, you kind of start to put together that this was their plan all along. It's time you good for nothing started to pull our own weight around here. That they manufactured this whole situation to force the Eds to work for them. Even when Eddie finally stands up for his friends, they immediately start sobbing and run to their rooms before, like the horror movie monsters that they are, materialize behind a door. Then in case if you had any serious doubts left, if the boys should be scared, they pull out Ed-shaped dolls and call them juniors. Because they want quotation marks here, to have their kids, sending the boys into a panic and running for the hills. Well, the girls stay behind and fawn over how cute they are, calling them real men. I think I'm in hell, you mean love? <sighs> See, this is why I actually don't have any trouble liking them here versus other shows. It's dumb, and not everyone will agree. But the Kankers are the villains of this show. Eddie's brother appears later, that was only in the finale. But for the most part, the Kankers are the antagonists. It plays a situation for comedy, but no one in the show is laughing besides them. These witches are cackling it up because the Eds aren't really what the girls are going for. Not entirely. The vibe the Kangers give me is that they enjoy harassing the Eds just as much, if not more so, than them liking them. It's that fucked up joy of pursuing the Eds, appearing out of trash cans, trying to kiss them, watching them scream and run away. That is really what gets them going. It's a sick game, and one that fits the show without feeling repetitive. Like, a lot of anime play with this idea. Like, you'll have the stalker friend, yandere term, yes, I know what it is. But then people in the show will usually just move on, just completely ignore it. It's like, la-di-da-di-da, move on with their lives, and never just like, no, this person's crazy. We should be worried. And we actually get that here. The Kankers are just straight up the villains. They're not anyone's friends. The Eds are scared of them, the other kids are scared of them, and the other kids are fully aware of the obsession they have with the Eds. And it's that logical consistency, it's that self-awareness that makes this way funnier to me than this. See, in Chowder, it's portrayed like it's supposed to be a little bit more cutesy. Panini wants it bad, Chowder wants nothing to do with her, with everyone else in the show playing off like it's young love. It'd be one thing if she was just a thirst monster from down the lane, but then we see her hang out with Chowder, watch his boss sell him to Panini for a deal, all the while she's just smiling like this is an actual relationship, and that just kind of rubs me the wrong way. 
Here though, the cankers are just the worst. Everyone knows it, even though I am a slut for villain romances, and this should be up my alley, I never get the vibe that this is an actual romantic interest. This is never an actual option that's on the table, which thank God. This is just pure fucked up comedy. And while I do have my own problematic villains that I absolutely love, I have to draw the line somewhere, but I think when a show is self-aware enough to understand that yes, this is bad, and not just play it off in-universe as a joke, I'm way more forgiving. Honestly though, the Kankers are bad, but they don't get that bad till the final season where they're basically like, oh no, we are just full stop, this is the only gag we're doing with them. But even in the final season, when Double D has had an awful emotional day and is about to get jumped by the Kankers, just Eddie yelling at them, telling them to let Double D go, because he's had enough, is it? They just listen. They put him down and walk away, because apparently when things get serious, they somehow respect boundaries more than Panini. In the previous seasons, they were used pretty efficiently because, and this is something you have to remember about this show, Karma is a bitch. Ed, Ed, and Eddie are the local scam artists. Their whole goal is to trick other kids into giving them money so they can get candy. They aren't the good guys. Even if no one in this show is fully innocent, except Plank, he's chill. Ralph, uh, debatable. So it's only natural in a story about con artists, in a show for children, that the scammers aren't gonna get their way. Sometimes it happens because of their own incompetence, sometimes it's just bad luck, and the rest is where the cankers fuck them up. Take this one episode where Eddie is feeling insecure about being short. Everyone is giving him grief, then Double D invents some platform shoes to help his little buddy out. Only for the King of Petty to turn around and start bullying everyone else right back. It's revenge. Just pure and simple. And I live for that petty energy in my cartoons. But when we see that he can't be the bigger man, the Kankers show up to cut his ego back down to size. They threaten to kiss him earlier, so he thinks he's ready for them. He is not. The Kankers got the remote and sent him plummeting back to Earth where he lands in a cradle dressed up like a baby. Because if you're gonna throw a tantrum, this is what tantrums get ya. The show reinforcing the Kankers as more of a threat than anything else. They're still screwing with the Eds, trying to kiss them, and it's terrifying. They can also be the antagonists who just bully the Eds. We see in another episode where Eddie gets Ed to be a fake comedian, setting up a comedy show where Eddie can charge the other kids to watch him say nonsense. The Kankers show up to shut it down and steal the money, with Eddie as the instigator getting most of the slapstick because he's the one egging it all on. Or when the Eds built a treehouse they called a club so that they can charge membership fees for things that they don't even have. Just when it looks like the Eds are about to get the money, the Kankers show up to steal the clubhouse, ruining the scam, causing a water balloon war that ends with Eddie not learning a damn thing. There's a sense of variety in the Kankers' interactions with the Eds that keep them entertaining long after other characters like them would get stale. I'm not saying what the Kankers do isn't fucked up, and I'll even go down the list in a moment. I just think that this show mostly hits thanks to all of the above reasons. No one here is a great person. This whole show is based around people getting the shit beat out of them, causing the gags that they do here to actually hit for me, rather than a bad joke that just keeps getting repeated. Judging media is a case-by-case -case basis, with this show being as slapstick heavy as it is, nothing it ever does feels too real, so you can't really take it seriously. Some of it is still real messed up though, like for example, that time the Kanger sisters booby-trapped an abandoned house in turning it into a Disney ride, revealing that their ultimate end goal for the Eds is domestic slavery, with a ride ending at a marriage ceremony where they cut off their circulation and force them to say I do. And to make sure they don't run, they're stuck in trash cans and naked. If this show was 13+, plus, there would be a shotgun at the back of their heads, and you can't convince me otherwise. And the boys end up getting hitched, like there's no, oh we got out of this moment. Which by the way, I just got that, they got hitched. Great visual joke. But while what happens is pretty fucked up, and this is how the episode just ends, it really is saved by the episodic storytelling. Because while all this technically happens, it kind of feels like every episode just retcons it back to a status quo. I mean, they destroy the cul-de-sac in dozens of these episodes. 
and I'm not sure how you can come back from this other than string theory. This is the level of mayhem you just really can't take seriously. Even if they did lock the boys down to play footsie, and just to show you how much the Eds don't like these girls, they would rather give themselves to an angry mob and be pelted with fruit as they are duct taped to a fence, than face the cankers. But I think the peak of what the fuck comes from the episode where Eddie hypnotizes the entire cul-de-sac into thinking they're animals, making Kevin into his pet monkey, which yeah, that is pretty extreme, and it's so far out of it that it is hilarious. There is no one-to-one -one real life example of this that can happen. Well, this leads into the ending of that episode where, again, Karma, the cankers show up, steal the hypno hat, and turn the Eds into dogs that they keep chained up outside. It's screwed up and a little bit proportional, and it's never brought up again. The show never treats them like it's an actual relationship or lies and says that they're actually good people. It shows them for what they are, bullies, who get off on picking on the Eds. It commits to this, which is something I can respect. It's done for comedy, which your mileage may vary on, totally fine if you don't like this, but for me, I'm mostly okay with it. The show knows what it is. The characters in the show know what they're doing is screwed up, and don't want anything to do with the cankers, which is pretty much all I need to get behind this as a comedy, and the creator basing them on actual bullies he had growing up, without turning it into a vindictive power fantasy, gets bonus points from me. This isn't a ship I personally care for, I'm way too invested in the friendship to ruin it with romance, the cankers have their place in the story. I'm still shocked by how popular Marie got, but lack of options plus blue-haired punk is just the perfect combo for a lot of people. And if you disagree with anything I've said in this video, let me know in the comments or I'll pretend to read them. Thank you all for watching, have a good one!